This video series titled How to Discern Who is Speaking to the End Time Messengers is mainly for those who are watching for the Lord right now, the Bride of Christ. <clears throat> My ministry does not seem to be for the lukewarm or the lost, but rather for the Bride, to edify her and encourage her as we get closer to the day of our transformation. One of the ways that I accomplish this is to promote videos and transcripts of words and sometimes dreams and visions of those who hear from the Lord. <coughs> Pardon me. While my website has been turned over to God and indeed is turned over daily with pleadings that He does not allow me to post anything that is not of Him, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes and even posted those who hear from the enemy. Let me just add that those are not posted for long. You who have read this website for a long time have seen this come to pass, and I admit my error to you when it's necessary. I am always so grateful to God that He shows me these things before much damage is done. <clears throat> Most of these messengers don't even know they're being deceived, and I don't wish to hurt them. God knows their hearts, and that's all I need to know. Yet, I don't want to post things from the enemy. So how do I learn that they aren't hearing from God? How does God bring this to my attention? That's what these videos are all about. Only in this case, it is to help you so that you too can know if you are hearing from God through a messenger or hearing words from the enemy. Let me be clear. This is not about how to hear the voice of God. This is about how to know that who you are listening to on YouTube or reading words, how do you know who they are hearing from? Here's what we're going to cover in this video series. The beginnings of my discernment training, and really, that's this entire first video, so feel free to skip it. If you don't care about how I was trained, I totally understand. Go straight to number two, because that starts with my current process of discernment. Also, how many types of messengers are out there? In my opinion, there's three. And also, how to separate messengers from their words. First, I want to give you some background on how God trained me on discernment. Some of this is going to sound weird, but we aren't meant to understand the ways of the Lord, that is for sure. And besides, what He trains us for may not be important until late years later. I'm sure many of you have experienced this. In this case, He started to wake me up in 2010 by watching Ghost Hunter shows of all things. Let me state that I have never had a strange encounter not one supernatural meeting with a spirit or a ghost or anything like that. Humans full of demons, yes, I have met those people. And that's a totally different story, which I'm not going to cover. But I have not met a spirit or an angel. Just haven't seen them, haven't felt them, haven't heard them, nothing. So frankly, I didn't believe in ghosts. I started watching that show, Ghost Hunters, and other types of those ghost shows because it seemed interesting. They were just shows I watched out of curiosity because I didn't think ghost, ghosts existed. So how could this happen? I assumed everything was caused by demons because those I believe did exist. But as I watched the shows, it started to become clear that there was something out there. I wasn't sure what it was, but I was praying about it and God was showing me. Even Jesus tells us in Luke 24 that ghosts don't have hands and feet like he does. My literal interpretation of that verse is this. If ghosts don't exist, Jesus would have told the disciples that. When they asked him, or when they told him, they thought he was a ghost. Instead, he gave them an explanation. Okay, so there was something out there besides demons. That is what I picked up from watching all of the ghost hunter shows. I didn't know what it was. I just thought... <coughs> Pardon me. I just thought, you know, there's something else out there. I don't know what it is. Something. So, if there were some type of ghost out there, who were they? Some of the ghost encounters seem to be from relatives. Now, I understand. I know that demons come to psychics as dead relatives. I've never been to a psychic, and I never will. But, again, having a religious upbringing as a Wesleyan, no less... We were taught some things of the devil versus in churches today. Sometimes I barely even hear his name. Not to mention that the Bible clearly tells us in Leviticus and other places not to visit with those who speak to the dead. We are even told in 1 Chronicles 10 that this was one of the sins that King Saul died of. Yikes! 
Demons that speak to psychics are called familiar spirits for a reason. They are very familiar with the life of the dead person. Easy to mimic that, which is why people are so gullible and believe they are hearing from their departed loved ones. So after watching many of these ghost shows, I became interested in watching people who had near-death experiences, known as NDEs. I knew there was something out there that wasn't a demon, wasn't a familiar spirit, but I didn't know what. That was not my focus, though, in learning about near-death experiences. My focus was, wh what are these people seeing when they die? <coughs> Sorry. Are these experiences true? What's going on here? I won't go into what I learned through all of that because it was part of my training as a Bride of Christ, and it's not applicable here. It's not a mystery or anything. It's just not what I'm talking about on this series. But for this video's purposes, I will tell you that I learned that all NDEs are not from God. Sometimes he allows those people to see a false Jesus or a light, but not the light of God. I am not talking about NDEs where people went to hell, but rather people that see a light and think it's God, and they come back and change their life in some spiritual way, but they're not, but not in a way that promotes Jesus as the Son of God. I even posted an NDE video and the breakdown of how I think that's a false light on my website. Uh, it's under Heaven Stories, which is uh, the good stuff tab, I think. I'm trying to remember. But I, I believe I've read, watched, and listened to at least a thousand of these near-death experience stories at this point. I've, I've just read so many of them. So I got an idea, kind of like the Ghost Hunter shows, that there was something that wasn't God and wasn't hell. What was that? So that's how God was waking me up. He just takes his time. Also, a, a quick note that a false Jesus can be seen in dreams and visions as well. Anyway, I learned that not only are there ghosts that aren't demons, but there are people that have died and not gone to hell and not gone to heaven but have seen something else. I, I know, I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry. I'm getting off on a tangent. So how is this possible? At that point, my interest in NDEs waned a bit, and I was led to the New Agers. Now, calm down because, well, let me keep reading. Keep in mind that I knew exactly who they were, but I believe God pointed my interest towards them. Know your enemy, so to speak. Please don't freak out with what you're about to hear or read because God was showing me these things for a reason. I knew with all my heart that he was with me in this and there was a purpose in it. Frankly, knowing what I know now, there is no way I would even read something like a channeling in depth anymore. For one, they are from evil beings and two, there is dark evil in the words just by reading. Don't read them. But in the case that the Father set aside for me, I was learning. He was training me for something I didn't know what, but I did feel protected. The same thing happens to people like L.A. Marzulli and Chuck Missler that study the fallen, the fallen angels. They have to understand the dark side of it in order to spot it and report it. When I first started reading these channelings that I found online, I immediately knew it was evil. I'm just right away. These, quote, messages, unquote, sounded loving. They seem to be full of light, but it is a false light, and the love is not genuine. I was frankly aghast that the people would comment on these messages could be so taken in. I mean, they loved what they were reading and hearing. It's incredible. But these were and are lies against Almighty God. Our precious Jesus was denigrated to existing simply as a a source with a small s. He is belittled in these channelings to represent an energy. And in no way do these evil beings suggest there is a holy God. Their words were falsely kind, but twisted, seemingly loving, but lying. I read these for about eight months, and I learned a lot. In between all of this, I also learned about UFOs, quote, aliens, unquote, hybrids, and other things that the fallen have used to promote themselves, so we will be deceived. Then I quit the whole channeling, UFOs, ghost hunting, near-death experiences, things, practically overnight. 
the interest in learning about them just left me. I know this was from God. I know that he was he wanted me to stop this and move on to something else. He even gave me a dream about it. So I quit. I had spent three years doing this, but God was ready to have me do something else. So I quit and moved on on my path, not even knowing that I had a path. I became involved in an end time forum. A lot of you know it as Rita now. Over time, I moved on to other forums and websites and slowly but surely came to find out that people were actually hearing from God. At, at my first encounter do, uh, reading this, I was very wary, having just come from reading all this demon talk in channelings. And to this day, I continue to be wary, and really, that's how you need to be. <coughs> all things need to be brought to God and no one else. He will show you if you ask. We tend to ask others because we get quick and easy to interpret feedback. But truly, that is not what God wants. He wants us to go directly to Him. So as I read more of these words and dreams and visions, my training expanded to the point where five years later, it is much easier for me to spot a false God speaking to someone. What is very sad is when that person believes they are talking with God. They are innocently deceived, not knowing that is not our Lord, and not understanding how to discern that voice. But those messengers are fewer than those of us who are affected by and believe in their words. That is what I'm going to talk about in the next video, my current discernment process and what it entails. Hopefully it helps.